So today we begin lecture 63 of the optimization series. And again, this continues with our stochastic optimization method. And this method is known as simulated annealing. We will call this briefly as SA. And this method is derived from physics or material science. And it's somewhat different than the method of genetic algorithm, which we discussed in the previous lectures, which is typically derived from biology or Darwin's theory. And again, I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, this is typically a method where you cool a material from its liquid state so that it solidifies into a crystalline state. And physically, this method means that as the material is cooled, energy of the atoms is decreased and you essentially reach a state where this is at a minimum point. So what happens in this physical process is that if a liquid is cooled quickly, the resulting solid will contain a lot of imperfections. If the liquid is cooled slowly, then large crystals will form. So essentially you want to cool the liquid slowly so that you get a better crystalline state for many materials. And this is the fact which is used in this particular method. So we can see from this physical representation that rate of cooling is going to be a crucial parameter in this process. And so what SA does is that it applies this particular concept of cooling a liquid very slowly to solve optimization problems. And this method was proposed by Kirkpatrick, Gallat, and Vecchi. There is a paper in Science. You can check it out in Google. And one of the interesting things about this method is that it comes from physics in contrast to many methods which come from biology. And that's one of the reasons I'm covering it in this lecture. Now, the basic philosophy is that you gradually cool down a metal from a high temperature to a minimum frozen state. And this is what we are going to try to do in a computational manner. Now let us compare this method with a gradient-based type of thinking. Now in a gradient-based method, you decrease the objective function by taking the descent step. Now once you have reached this descent mode, by taking the descent step, you are going to head downhill the slope and you are going to converge to a local minimum point. Now, if you have a multimodal function, that is a function which has multiple minimum point points, then the gradient based method is going to converge to the local minima, which is closest to you, which is being pointed out by the descent step. Therefore, the typical gradient met based method cannot escape from these local minimum type of situations. So what SA tries to do is tries to have something built in which lets the objective function to increase some of the time. And this is very important because if you conceptually think of a problem with several local minima, some local minima are going to be shallow, some are going to be deep. So if you are nearby a shallow minima, you must let your method get out of this shallow valley so that it can climb up the nearby hill and then it can fall into the deeper valley which is just nearby. So again, this kind of thinking is required when you want to develop a method which is more global, which is going after non-linear functions and wants to get to a better minimum point. So essentially this aspect of the method lets you escape a local minimum point and you do not necessarily converge to the local valley where the minimum lies, but you explore the entire terrain 
and you try to converge to a better solution. Now, this is something which gradient based methods would not be able to do. They would essentially choose the best move at a particular point where you get the maximum decrease in the cost function and they would rapidly converge to the local minimum point and at that point the gradient being zero they would declare that they have got a minimum point. Now SA chooses a random move. That's a big difference between gradient based methods which would choose a method or a move dictated by some kind of calculus based thinking. If you recall it's all those search directions D vector which we looked at D is minus C or negative of gradient for the steepest descent method and then there were a plethora of different methods. Now in contrast to this direction this new method chooses a random move and if this random move were to reduce the objective function then essentially you move in this direction and you go to the next design point. But if your random move leads to the objective function going up then this particular move is also a feasible move and you accept it based on a probability which is defined as p is e to the power minus delta f by t where delta f is the change in the objective function fxk plus 1 minus fxk. So these are the basic thinking behind the method we are discussing here, the SA method. So here delta F is the increase in the objective function and T is the system temperature. So now you can see that the probability here is going to depend on these two factors delta F and T. So if we concentrate on T, we can see that for high values of T, delta F by T is small and therefore P is going to become large. So you have a higher probability of tolerating this increase in the objective function at higher values of temperature. So that is something which is coded into this particular method. So to explore this further, if you look at this method, if the temperature is very high, the probability is one. That means at very high temperature, you accept the fact that your objective function may go up. So at the starting of the algorithm when the temperature is very high, you look around the entire global region and you are essentially randomly searching the region. You are prepared with going up or down as the case may be as is dictated by the random search. However, as the method progresses and you decrease the temperature, you look more and more locally and therefore you try to get to the local minimum point. Now, how do we get this particular exponential expression for probability? This is drawn from the law of thermodynamics that at a temperature T, the probability of the delta E value going up is P delta E is E to the power minus delta E by KT. Some of you may recall this from physical chemistry or from thermodynamics or physics as the case may be. And here K is the Boltzmann constant. So this is the equation from physics which is used for the inspiration of this particular method. So what we do in this process, and this is very typical of algorithms in computer science, is that the implementation of SA drops this Boltzmann, Boltzmann constant K and essentially takes P as E to the power minus delta F by T. So this delta F is used to replace this delta E here and this K is dropped. So this thinking is used here. And again, this is driving the method or the situation to a better state in terms of its probability. So that's the source of this particular expression here. It's coming from physics or material science. So let us now write out a generic code or algorithm for this particular method. 
So we start from a random design XK. We have to choose an initial system temperature T and a particular schedule or method of cooling by which we are going to cool this particular problem or we want to come down in T. You calculate the value of the function f at xk. Recall that you already chose xk here as a random design. You obtain a neighborhood design xk plus 1 by a random move. So this is very interesting. This is just moving randomly around the current point. Calculate the function value at this new point xk plus 1. Now you apply the two steps in this method using the if then else statements. So if this function value at the new point is lower than the current point, then accept this as the current solution. It's fine, you are decreasing. If the function value is greater than the current point, then you accept xk plus 1 as the new current solution with probability p is e to the power minus delta f by t and delta f is f x k plus 1 minus f x k then you reduce the system temperature based on the particular method you have choosing chosen for cooling down and then finally you terminate the method so this is the basic outline of the SA method and in the next lecture I'm going to discuss in detail the particular method to cool down the system. I'll see you in my next video.